Tell me, were there more males or females on that list? Well, it was a bit of a trick question, I think. Um, we had 48 names in that list, 48 faces, 48 celebrities actually. Um, but of the 48 celebrities, we had half of them were male and half of them were female. And so uh, there was no correct answer um, for the quiz. But what we did do was we took the male faces, right? So the 24 males, half of those, 12 of those, were famous celebrities. So people might remember from the list there was uh, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, um, Steve Jobs, right? People, things, faces, people that most everyone in the course would, would recognize. Um, now, the thinking is here with this sort of experiment, this has been done time and time again, but the idea here is that my bet would be that most people would have remembered the 12 males that were in that original list. Maybe not explicitly, but they may have remembered them. Um, and when they were thinking back to the list of males, these people may have stood out. Now the female list, the 24 of the females, were all B-grade celebrities for the most part. Um, so a few of them may, they may have remembered, but not many at all, right? So when you're trying to make an estimate of uh, males relative to females in that list of faces, hopefully some of the males would have come to mind more easily. And, and the idea here is that it's that ease of processing, that ease of sort of cognitive processing um, when thinking back to the males, that went down a little bit easier, and so people would, would misinterpret that uh, ease of processing for, for the category being larger than the female category. But are people actually remembering, do, do they have a list of the celebrities in their head? Do they, do they, do they remember Brad Pitt? Is that right. on their internal list? Not necessarily. I don't think it has to be explicit. Now, there's another really good example that kind of highlights this. And what we can do is we can show students uh, in the course uh, these two letter strings. Now, the, the letter string on the top and the letter string in the bottom. And so what we want them to do is uh, estimate, given these two letter strings, how many words you can construct given the letters in these letter strings. Okay? Now, even without having any of those words come to mind, people will quickly recognize that the letter string at the bottom will produce more words than the letter string at the top. Okay, so it's exactly the same principle. It's, it's, both of these examples are examples of the availability heuristic, right? Which is simply the number of instances that come to mind of that particular category. And people misinterpret the ease of processing uh, which could be due to any number of reasons, as being indicative of, of the larger category. I think this happens a lot in the media. So we, when we hear about deaths, we tend to hear about uh, shark attacks and, and plane crashes and uh, terrorist attacks. We don't hear much about uh, the people who died that night on the 6 p.m. news uh, of asthma or, or heart disease. So I'd be willing to bet that, that people would pay uh, far more, far higher insurance premiums to protect themselves uh, from the things that they hear a lot in the media about how people die uh, versus what, what, what the base rates might actually show that people are most likely to, to die of. Now, we have an example of this. Uh, a couple of years ago in Brisbane, there was uh, a reasonably major flood and you and I had to, to leave our homes and find someone else and it was a big mess and it took a couple of weeks to clean up, etc. Um, now, after that event, I'd bet that the people who were directly affected, like we were, uh, by that flood are now far more likely to buy flood insurance uh, than people who are unaffected. And I think they'd be far more willing to pay higher premiums uh, for flood insurance. But also over time, uh, as our memory fades of that event, I think that willingness to pay those high premiums will, will drop and people will be far uh, less likely over time to, to pay a lot for flood insurance. Exactly. And so it's this kind of link between availability, the availability heuristic, and risk perception has been demonstrated time and time again, and that's absolutely the case. And so in the media, well, obviously, the media is extremely important in shaping our perceptions and the decisions that we make. I mean, if all we hear about, for example, is, uh, as you said, about homicides and about you know these sort of newsworthy deaths, 
as opposed to things like heart disease or liver cancer and so on, then we're going to have enormously skewed sorts of perceptions about how common these types of deaths are. And in fact, that is the case. If you were to ask people how likely it is that someone would die from a shark attack, they would say that it's you know, way more likely than it actually is at the expense of things like heart disease and so on, which people really underestimate because they never hear about them. You might hear about them uh, with respect to family members or you know, friends or something, but... Yeah, when you're bombarded every night in the media by, by these things, it's... You know. Yeah, exactly. And so the media really shapes that. And uh, Danny Kahneman talks about this, uh, this idea of, of availability, but also the idea of availability cascades. And so if there's a relatively minor event, uh, that happens, say uh, a tremor or something like that, and uh, and you have this news agency um, who kind of blows it out of proportion, makes it larger than it actually is, then people start to freak out a little bit more, uh, which then feeds more coverage, which results in people freaking out a little bit more, and then it, it just kind of cascades, and it gets worse and worse. And in fact, he talks about these... Um, availability entrepreneurs, these, these people that in these news agencies that kind of make a living out of doing this. And so, I mean, that it's, it's never been more important, I think, to, to consider what's, where we're getting our information and uh, what sort of information we're exposing ourselves to because that fundamentally shapes the way that we see and perceive the world. And if all we're doing is surrounding ourselves with kind of um, second-rate news, then we're kind of at the, at the whim of, of these, these types of agencies. Mm -hmm.